Here's a quick problem about semi-log graphing uh, that we did in class today that might be helpful to, to look at. Um, here's a graph of three investments. A starts from here, goes up to here. B starts with the same initial investment, goes over to here. C starts lower and ends up lower over the period from 1950 to 2010, 60 years. And I asked some questions. So for example, um, well, first of all, we didn't have the scale marked in. What, what I did tell people is the starting amount for A and B was $2,000. And then I asked, can we make sure we know where C, B, and A end up? And that's a matter of understanding a semi-log scale. So if you go straight across, and uh, uh, one of the students put in a helpful bold line, we see that this is... Uh, this is a number two, so that must mean 2,000. Because remember, these scales just r usually repeat when they're written, written out and sort of like coming on the graph paper. So this really means 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, up to 10,000. Then 20,000, 30,000, up to 100,000. And then up to 400,000 is where A ends up. I know you can't read that very well, but there's a four there, and it's 400,000. So B ends up at 10,000, A ends up at 400,000, C ends up at just 5,000. Okay. So, um, the next question I asked was a qualitative question, and this is the kind of thing where this paper really is nice. What's the comparison, for example, between the interest rate B received and the interest rate C received? Well, what you can see is that these are parallel lines. And one of the things we discovered about graphing exponential growth on semi-log paper is that the slope is proportional to the interest rate. And so these guys have identical interest rates, whatever that rate is. We don't know it precisely yet. We'll figure it out in a minute. But uh, we do know they have identical interest rates. They just start out at different amounts. Well, let's see. Where is this? This was 2,000 here. We follow this across. Oh, that's 10. But what does that really mean? It means 1,000. So C started with half as much money as B and ends up, surprisingly enough, with half as much money. Oh, yeah. That's, how, that's the linearity of exponential growth is they have the same growth factor, um, and in fact, you can see that growth factor is a factor of exactly five. They both quintupled their money, 1,000 to 5,000 or 2,000 to 10,000. Um, so um, what about A's interest rate compared to B and C? Well, there we want to look at the slope. And remember, it's not about reading these numbers off. It's really about the physical slope on the paper. So we can just kind of eyeball that to get an approximation. Here's how much B physically went up on the paper from its starting level to its ending level. And then, so one, two, three, even a little bit more. So A's interest rate is probably a little more than triple of B's. And we can read that off roughly, very easily, without even without a calculator or anything. And that's the power of this stuff. So let's, let's write that down. Uh, let's say R sub A is the rate for A. That looks like about three times R sub B while R sub B looks like it's pretty close to exactly equal RC because they have the same growth factor. So they really, they really looks like they're exactly equal to the accuracy of this picture anyway. Okay. So that's really nice to know. And, but let's actually calculate things like R sub A. How would we do that? There we actually have to put it into the equations. Okay. Um, we could figure out how to do a yoga with the, the physical slope and these two numbers and stuff like that. But it's, that's probably a little bit further than we want to go. Um, we do know it went from 2,000 to 400,000. And so we can just pl plug it into our equations. 400,000 was the ending amount. And that was 2,000. Let's assume it's continuous compounding. Um, pretty good approximation, usually. Um, to the R times, and then the T went from 1950 to 2010, 60 years. Okay, so in other words, the growth factor was a 200 growth factor. Wow. E to the R times 60. Now take a log. LN 200 equals R times 60, or R is LN 200 over 60. And when you calculate that, I believe it works out to about 0 0.088, I think, if I remember right. So in other words, 8.8%. .8 pretty good, but um, actually, you know, over that, that period from 1950 to 2000, actually if you went from 40 to 2000, it might be better. You could get um, that kind of growth rate. 
And so that's a pretty amazing thing, going starting with 2,000, ending with 400,000. And it's not by some amazing, clever investment. It's just the stock market. Okay, recently it hasn't been as good. Uh, what about RB? To check this kind of calculation, that seat of the pants calculation from the visual thing. The growth factor there, 2,000 to 10,000, we talked about already, was only 5. So there the growth factor is 5. That's e to the r. B times 60. I guess I should have had an R A throughout here. Okay, so very similar calculation. L in 5 over 60 R B. L in 5 is about uh, 1.6. And 1.6 over 60, tell you what, I'm going to just sneaky calculation. Oops, that didn't work. Never mind. Well, 1.6 over 60 is about um let's see. It's about 2.7%, very roughly. Okay. And indeed, that's a little less than a third of this percentage. Okay. So, that's the kind of um of thing we can easily do with a semi-log graph. They're really adapted for these kinds of exponential growth problems.